In this video I'm going to go on a little walk around the ponds in my yard and point out some of the different plants I've used in and around them. Keep in mind I'm just a pond DIYer, I don't build ponds or create gardens for a living. If you don't already know me, my name is Kev and the aim of my channel is to help people build and maintain ponds without spending a fortune. And if that sounds like something that interests you, feel free to subscribe and check out my website, ozponds.com. I live in a region called Gippsland in the southeastern corner of Australia. This zone would be classed as around zone 9B or 10A if it were in the US. Some of the plants that I have in my garden and ponds will tolerate colder areas and some will tolerate warmer areas. Our winters are cold and wet with regular frosts, but no snow, and our summers tend to be dry and hot. It's getting late in the autumn here, and most things aren't looking their best, but let's take a walk around anyway. I'll start with the plants that I grow inside the pond, and then we'll move around into the surrounds. I like to use a combination of hardy water lilies and some hybrids. The hybrids are created by breeding hardy and tropical water lilies together. You can see the hybrid flower opens above the water surface, whereas the hardy lily practically sits on top of the water. Hybrids offer a better range of colours, and they try and retain their leaves even through my winter. I've already cut the hardies back for the season, but the hybrid thinks it's still got a little left in the tank. Water lilies are heavy feeders. These are the only pond plants that I use soil on. I'll also feed them at the very start of spring and early in the summer. A water plant fertilizer tablet like this is just pushed into the soil. Over the top of the soil is small pebble to try and stop the soil from mixing with the water. Another lily-like plant that I like is this yellow water fringe there's heaps of different varieties of this. I was sold this one as a native, <laughs> hopefully it is, because I've used it in almost all my ponds. It sends out runners and will spread extensively in shallow areas. This is planted directly into the pebble. Up in my dream pond, I have it planted out in one corner with the tropical hybrid water lily. The idea here was to provide plenty of cover for baby fish. I'm pretty sure the cormorant got all my lovely rainbow fish. It certainly wreaked havoc in my goldfish ponds. On the margins of the pond, in the streams, and even the bog filters, I have a group of plants that I use over and over again. For pops of colour, you just can't beat impatience. These are planted directly into the pebble, on the margins inside the liner. During the warmer months, they look spectacular, and they're pulling nutrients from the water to fuel their colourful display. They will die off in the winter here, but they self-seed and pop up next spring. I love how now they just pop up in random nooks and crannies. I also like adding impatience to my bog filters, especially the smaller ones. In the ponds that are under cover and sheltered from the frost, the impatience will stay year round. This individual plant is four years old. For a strappy grassy marginal, I like to use dwarf sweet flag. It doesn't get too big and I just remove it by the clump when it encroaches in onto the stream. When you remove any plant that is growing off nutrients in the water, you effectively completely remove that nutrient from the water. But when we allow the plant to decompose inside the pond, that nutrient load is re-released. The more organic material that we can remove from the pond, the better. That includes anything that falls in from the surrounding gardens. That's why adding an intake bay or skimmer makes so much sense, as these are natural collection points where you can more easily remove organic material. If something is easy, you're more likely to do it. At least I am, anyway. Milfoil is another one of my favourites. There's lots of different varieties. It forms quite dense mats of roots, but the foliage is very easily pulled out. It grows very fast, and because the foliage is easily removed, it's a great one for reducing nutrient loads. 
I don't use it on my smaller bog filters, but I'll use it on my larger ones, especially if I'm treating them as fry ponds. The milfoil provides wonderful hides for baby fish and shrimp. In this bog, it's allowed on the margins, but I don't want it growing in the bottom of the bog where it could potentially restrict the flow of water up through the rock and the pebble. My other go-to marginal is Bacopa. It will grow in the water and on the land, and it's just perfect at blurring the lines between where is the water and where is the land. This variety gets small white flowers. In winter, it does yellow off a bit, but doesn't fully die off in my climate. I like to add in ferns like maidenhair in shady parts. These can also go directly into the pebble on the margins of the pond or stream. Other varieties will even just randomly appear via spores. I also like to add in different types of moss onto the rocks and see what will be happy to colonise. Baby tears is another good one. I like to plant it in amongst the rocks inside the liner and it kind of looks like moss too. For a marginal reed with a bit of height, my favourite is tassel cord rush. I like it because it's got soft foliage. It makes a number of appearances throughout my ponds and streams when I want to add a bit of framing and structure. In my container ponds, I usually go for some combination of water lilies, water fringe and eelgrass. In the shrimp tubs, I like duckweed, eelgrass, and maybe some frog bit. I think that's it for all the pond plants that I like to use. Uh, if you're still interested and not too bored, I can show you some of the plants that I like to use in the areas around my ponds. I'll start up here in the front yard. Most of this garden is less than 12 months old. There are parts and trees that were established much earlier that we're working with. I often get asked about this moss-like green cushiony thing and it's called Scleranthus biflorus. It's an Australian native and it just looks awesome around rocks and ponds. The purple grass is a type of penicetium. Here we call it purple fountain grass. There's also a Japanese maple on the left hand side. Maples and ponds are just a match made in heaven even if they are a pain when they drop all those leaves. On the left hand side of the boardwalk, it's meant to have a bit of a Japanese vibe as it pulls you around into the courtyard area. So here, along with the maple, we have taller Nandina domestica or sacred bamboo, even though it's not a bamboo. We have a Luma apiculata, we're trying to keep as a topoary, and some small heucheras along the edge of the boardwalk. That grey ground cover there is called Dichondra Silver Falls. The boardwalk leads around into the courtyard and here I have another young burgundy maple and some more scleranthus. I'm also trialling growing some real bamboo in a tub so it doesn't spread everywhere. The silver ground cover near it is Cerastium Snow in Summer and it should cover the ugly tub in time. Then we move into the courtyard this side's where I'm in the process of building my solely only water feature. I'll hopefully do an update on that next week. The reservoir is in. The silver birch was one of the first trees we planted on the property 15 years ago. And here's the courtyard pond. In here we have things like dwarf nandina, trackless vernum tricolour, prostrate conifers, sedums, more scleranthus, some maples, another type of trackless spurnum going over the arch and climbing fig on the fence surrounding the yard. The large green shrubs on the left are called Acacia cognata mini cog and they make quite a few appearances throughout the yard. The plants inside the pond we've covered already. Then on the other side of the boardwalk and this is what you see off the veranda and out of the living room window and it's got a more of an Australiana feel with a few exotics like a big date palm that was just too big and beautiful to have removed. On this side of the boardwalk, we kept some common themes like the acacias and the fountain grass. We have Dianella, which is a native grass along the edge of the boardwalk. 
Then we planted some smaller eucalypts or gum trees called Silver Princess. Throughout this middle section is quite a few Australian native shrubs and ground covers. We have things like kangaroo paw, small banksias, assortment of myoporums, grevilleas, bronias, and grass trees. It's all still very young, but as it establishes, it should be very nice. Up under the date palm, we've planted clivias and fishburn ferns on the palm itself. Up by the stream, we have lamiums, strobilanthus, cyclamens, and an assortment of ferns that I didn't water over summer. They'll bounce back now that the rain's coming. So up around the stream and under the date palm, it's a blend of native and exotics. Because we can't see this part of the garden from the living room window or veranda, I wanted to have a bit more colour to make you come up and explore the stream. It's not looking its best at the moment, but again, once it all establishes, it should be pretty nice. Of course, it would look better if I wasn't so lazy and I actually watered the ferns over summer instead of frolicking in the pond. The hedge we have along the front is Akamina smithi. It's a native lily pilly. We have a lot of different types of lily pilly scattered throughout the garden. Over time, they should really help shade this entire back section of the pond and make it feel like a mini rainforest. That's the aim anyway. This is one of the bog filters for the main pond. This one has a tree fern growing in it. Here we have some different types of orchids and native violets. They look quite pretty when they're flowering. This is another type of lily pilly called Waterhousia. Here's bog number two. Back in this corner, we have a bunch of assorted canna lilies. I don't like to plant them inside the pond or the bogs as they have a very vigorous root system, but they look great as a backdrop, especially during the summer. Then down here along the edge of the pond, I've used a variety of ground covers and small shrubs. Some of my favorites are Alpine Violet, Snow in Summer, Scavola, and of course the Bacopa, which pops out of the pond margins. And my favorite shrubs up here is the Kufia or Mexican Sakar plant. So I think I've covered most of the plants that I like to use. If you're new to the channel, you can see how all the ponds were built using homemade filters to save money. I know it doesn't look spectacular at the moment, but give it a few more years to mature. If you enjoyed this video, tickle the thumbs up button. And as always, thanks for watching. See ya.